In this video, we're finally going to start talking about stoichiometry. You've heard me mention it in class before or on videos, but stoichiometry, while it sounds really crazy, it's actually not that bad. It's combining the concepts that we learned in the mole unit and the reactions unit to figure out what goes in and what comes out of a reaction. So you're probably wondering why I put up a mouse and why it says making baked goodies. Well, stoichiometry is kind of like a recipe. So anybody who bakes knows that it's really important to have the right proportion of ingredients. If you use too many eggs or not enough butter or too much flour, you won't come out with a nice cake or cookies or brownies, whatever you're trying to bake. So it's really important to have those ratios of the ingredients be exactly right. If you've ever tried to have a recipe or double a recipe, it can be really complicated with baking. Uh, things. So let's talk about what stoichiometry is. It's how we figure out how much of a substance we need for a reaction or how much we can produce in a reaction. So if you look at this example, we've got methane plus oxygen. This is a combustion reaction and it produces carbon dioxide and water. And we've always balanced reactions and we've talked about the fact that the atoms on the left side and the atoms on the right side have to be equal because of conservation of matter. And so we, we balance those equations to make sure that we have the same number of atoms going in and going out. So what we can do is we can figure out exactly, if we know how much we start with, we can figure out exactly how much of one of the products we're going to make, or actually both of the products. We'll just usually do one. But if you look, if I know I have one molecule of methane, I know that I will generate one carbon dioxide molecule and two water molecules. And I know if I ended up with two water molecules, then I must have started with one methane molecule. So we just use that mole to mole relationship. And that's, that comes from that balanced reaction. So the first thing we always want to do is start with the balanced reaction. So let's look at that relationship. So I, you're probably looking at this and thinking this is the beginning of a really big and complicated flow chart. It is, hopefully not too bad though. But what this tells us is if we've got a reaction where A plus B, so we've got two reactants, gives us C plus D, two products. If we know how many moles of A we have started with, we know how many moles of B we need to make that reaction occur. And so we use that mole ratio from the balanced reaction. Remember that the coefficients in the balanced reaction give us the relationship between the number of atoms give us the relationship between the number of atoms, and then the number of atoms have a relationship to the moles because of Avogadro's number. So that uh, coefficient becomes that mole to mole ratio. If I know how many moles of one thing I have, I know how many moles of the other thing I need or will produce. So let's look at an example. So this would be a, a problem that you would see. It's asking how many moles of silver can be produced by the reaction of 0.5 moles of copper with silver nitrate if copper 2 nitrate is also produced. So our first step is always going to be to write the complete balanced reaction. So this goes back to nomenclature, writing reactions, and then we're going to get into the mole part of it. So for we have to think about reading the problem. It's, it's a word problem, so we have to think about where everything goes. So it says how many moles of silver can be produced. So produce tells us that that is a product. So we're going to put silver on the product side by the reaction of 0.5 moles of copper. So copper is reacting. So that's going to go on the reactant side with silver nitrate. So silver nitrate, uh, it's an ionic compound. So we have to think about the charges. Silver is a one plus. Nitrate is a one minus. So it's Ag. NO3. And then it says if copper 2 nitrate is also produced. So with the 2 here, remember that that's a 2 plus charge on the copper. We already know nitrate is a 1 minus. So our other product, and it says that it's also produced, so that indicates that that's a product, is going to be CuNO3. And because copper has a plus 2 charge, you need two of those nitrates to make that neutral. So we've got our reaction, now we need to balance it. Uh, everything's balanced except the nitrate, so I'm going to put a 2 here, and then I'm going to need to put a 2 in front of the silver to balance it. 
So now what we want to do is go ahead and look through our problem and find our information that we need to start with. So we've got 0 0.500 moles of copper and it's asking us how many moles of silver can be produced. So we're going to set up our first conversion factor. We want moles of copper on the bottom. And then it's asking us for moles of silver. And that's what comes, that's what gives us our, and that comes from that mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction. So we've got two moles of silver for every one mole of copper. Remember, we don't write the one, but if there's no number there, we assume that that's a one. So for every one mole of copper, there are two moles of silver. And then everything is just like it's always been in terms of our answers on these uh, problems, these factor label problems. We just multiply everything on top, divide by what's on the bottom, and that's going to give us 1.00 moles of silver. And you can see your moles of copper will cancel, and you're just left with moles of silver. That's it. It is that simple. Okay, so if you were worrying about these, hopefully you're not quite as worried as you are. Let's try another problem. All right. Again, first step, set up a balanced reaction. That's your job. So go ahead and set that up. Then go ahead and see if you can set up the multiple -mul ratio, and we will go through it together. All right, so moles of oxygen are necessary to react with iron. So we've got oxygen is reacting with iron. Remember, iron's going to be Fe. And it's going to form, so form means it's going to make or produce. Iron 3, iron's got a 3 plus charge. Oxygen is a 2 minus. So it's going to be Fe2O3. And then we need to balance it. Um, we've got two oxygens on this side and three on this side, so we need to do six of each. So I'm going to put a three in front of the oxygen and a two in front of the iron three oxide. And then that leaves us with four irons to balance that. So let's go ahead and set that up. So in our problem, we've got 0 0.450 moles of iron. And again, this is just one step, moles to moles. Remember with the flow chart, one step to the next. We're going from moles of iron to moles of oxygen. And for every four moles of iron, four moles of iron, we make three moles of oxygen. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator and see what you get. So when you punch that into your calculator, 0.45 times 3 divided by 4, and what I got for that one is 0 0.338, and let's check our units, moles of iron cancel, so we're left with moles of O2. Remember your sig figs, you have three in your problem, so you should have three in your answer. All right, let's try another one. Read through this, set up the balanced reaction, see if you can set up the entire thing on your own. All right, let's take a crack at this one. All right, so when you read this, it says carbon dioxide is produced, CO2, by the decomposition of 0.1 moles of iron 3 carbonate. So iron 3 is iron with a 3 plus. Carbonate is CO3 with a 2 minus charge. So that's going to be Fe2 and then the carbonate CO3-3. Now, you should be looking at this and going, this is not correct. 
It didn't give me all the information in my problem. And so when you see that, it tells you that it's a decomposition reaction. And we know that the carbonates, the metal carbonates, are one of our special uh, cases. So it decomposes into iron 3 oxide and then the carbon dioxide, which it told us about in the problem. So iron 3 oxide, iron is a 3 plus, oxide is a 2 minus, so it's going to be Fe2O3. So now we need to go through and balance this. So looking at this, we've got uh, 3 carbons and 9 oxygens. Let's work on just the carbon here. And if we put 3 there, we've got 6 uh, sorry, three carbons and then six oxygens, so carbon is balanced, and then we've got nine oxygens total, six plus three, so this is balanced. So just remember to pay attention to the clues in the problem. You may have to kind of fill in some gaps here. All right, so let's look at this one. It's giving us 0 0.100 moles of iron three carbonate, and I'm really going to encourage you to include your uh, formulas here because what's going to happen is these are going to grow. We're going to add more conversion factors and it's really easy to make a mistake if you don't. Uh, so we want moles of iron 3 carbonate and then we want to find how many moles of CO2. Okay, so again we're looking at that relationship between the moles of CO2, so three moles of CO2, and then our moles of iron three carbonate, and we know that that's a one. All right, let's go ahead and cancel our units. Our moles of iron three carbonate will cancel. We're left with moles of CO2, and that's what we're looking for, so that tells us that we have this set up correctly. And then it's just a matter of multiplying 0 0.1 times three. So 0 0.300, and again, pay attention to your sig figs. Three in your problem, there should be three in your answer. Let's try another one. All right, so sodium phosphate, sodium is a one plus, phosphate is a three minus, and it's needed to react with copper two chloride. So if it's reacting with, it's going to go on the left side of the equation. So Na3PO4 and then you've got co it's reacting with copper 2 chloride. So copper has a 2 plus, chloride is a 1 minus, so it's going to be CuCl2. Now hopefully you're looking at this and going this looks like a double replacement reaction because it is. Remember that copper is going to keep its same charge. The outers go together and the inners go together. So we're going to end up with copper 2 phosphate and then our other product is going to be sodium chloride. So let's go ahead and get that one written and balanced. Copper 2 phosphate, copper's a plus 2, phosphate's a 3 minus, so it's going to be Cu3, PO4, 2, and then sodium chloride is going to be NaCl. All right, so let's go ahead and try to figure out how to balance this one. Let's start off with a phosphate. Polyatomics are a good place to start, so I'm going to put a 2 in front of sodium phosphate, and that gives me two phosphates. And then I've got to put a 3 to balance my copper. And if you look, that gives me six sodiums and six chlorides, so I can just put a six here. So that's my complete balanced reaction. Now I need to set up my uh, equation with my mole-to-mole -mole ratio to figure out the answer for my problem. So I'm starting off with 0 0.400 moles of copper 2 chloride. And I'm just going to emphasize again, please include the formula name. Do not shortcut on that. When you shortcut, you will make mistakes. So we've got moles of copper 2 chloride on the bottom, and moles of sodium phosphate is what we're being asked to find. And again, we're just looking for that mole-to-mole -mole ratio from the balanced reaction. We know that we've got three moles 
of copper 2 chloride and 2 moles of sodium phosphate. So it's very simple to go ahead and plug those in and when you put that into your calculator you should get 0 0.2666 repeating. Remember your sig figs. So that's going to be 0 0.267. Let's check our canceling of our units. Moles of copper 2 chloride cancel and we're left with moles of sodium phosphate. Okay. Again, just to remind you, please include these in your factors because as these grow it gets easier to make a mistake. Alright, let's try a couple more. Alright, so let's set this one up. Go ahead and pause and try it yourself. So how many moles of zinc are needed to completely react with? So zinc is reacting with hydrochloric acid. So zinc plus hydrochloric acid, hopefully you remember the name is the, sorry, the formula is HCl. When you look at this, this should look like a single replacement reaction. Remember that zinc will replace hydrogen, so it's going to produce zinc chloride. So zinc is a plus two charge, chloride's a minus one, so ZnCl2, and then it produces H2. It, the zinc replaces the hydrogen, so it kicks off the hydrogen. And go ahead and balance that equation. You should end up with a 2 here in front of the HCl. That one's nice and easy. And then we're just going to go ahead and set up our uh, conversion. So we've got 0 0.300 moles of hydrochloric acid. And we're going to set up our conversion factor. We want moles of hydrochloric acid on the bottom to cancel. And we want moles of zinc on top so that that's what we end up with. And then we want to go ahead and fill in our coefficients from our balanced reaction. We've got one mole of zinc and we've got two moles of HCl. When you put that in your calculator, first let's cancel our units. Moles of HCl cancel, so we're left with moles of zinc. And then when you put that in your calculator, 0.3 divided by 2 is 0 0.150 moles of zinc. Don't forget your uh, sig figs on these answers. All right, let's try this one. This one's a little tougher in terms of just the setup. So go ahead and give that a try, and then we'll go through it together. So this one asks, how many moles of potassium chlorate are needed to generate 0.150 moles of oxygen gas. So we need the potassium chlorate to generate the oxygen gas. If we're generating the oxygen, it's going to be on the right side of the equation. It's a product of the equation. And if we're using the potassium chlorate to generate it, it's going to be on the left side of the equation. Potassium is a 1 plus, chlorate is a 1 minus, so one of each K and ClO3, and that's going to give us oxygen. Hopefully you're looking at this and going, something is really missing here. And if you look, it is a decomposition reaction, and it is a metal chlorate. So if you look at that, your other product is going to be the metal chloride, so potassium, which is a plus one, chloride is minus one, so KCl. And then we need to go ahead and balance this. If we do, we've got to put a, we've got a three oxygens on the left and two on the right, so I'm going to put a three here and a two here, and that gives me two KCLs. So if we start off with 0 0.150 moles of oxygen, see if you can set this one up and come up with the correct answer. We will look at the answer in class, all right? So I will see you there. I hope this makes sense to you. If not, please write down your questions or shoot me an email and we'll talk about it in class. Thanks so much.